Man, it's Valentine's Day. We should do some kind of romance story, but... I mean, right now, I'm not seeing a lot of really, really good ones. Maybe... Hmm. All right, let's try to find a... Oh, that was fast. Oh. Hell. Yes. My first ever D&D experience was a game set among friends. It was mostly new players, but it was implied to me that the DM was experienced and knew the setting well. Because I was new, I missed a bunch of immediate red flags. We were playing 3.5 Eberron with literally every expansion and addition allowed. In fact, the DM was disappointed when his entirely new group of players all chose to play fairly simple archetypes instead of somehow magically knowing how to play exploitive and game-breaking combos by comboing multiple versions together that were clearly not written with compatibility in mind. Nonetheless, we were all excited. I was a changeling sorcerer posing as an elf with an existing relationship with another party member, our fighter. We also had a rogue, bard, and ranger. The players were all keen and ready. Since it is relevant, both the rogue player and myself are female. Everyone else, including the DM, is male. Oh boy, it's... it's gonna be one of those days. There was no session zero. The first session was literally to be, we were all meeting at a tavern to sign up for the same job. No motivations, no real plot hooks, but I also heard a lot of games start out like this, so eh. Unfortunately, I had to miss the session at the last second due to work, and when I asked how it went, I got mixed reports. Fighter friend told us that he'd signed us up for the job, as he agreed, and then said that Ranger player had arrived drunk and spent most of the session being incoherent or just picking fights. This included an infamous moment where he insisted that he could use his swim skill to dance on the floor. I'd sorta had my hopes up for a grand adventure story, but it seemed like the vibe of the group was going in a sillier direction. Okay, no worries, that could still be fun. Then. We got to the next session, and some problems started to crystallize for me. The party swung by to pick up my character en route to our employer, who had an airship. This airship would become the bane of our entire existence. It was magically enhanced to be impenetrable to basically everything, and filled to the brim with level 20 NPCs of unusual races and classes, all exploiting every weird nuance of 3.5 as much as possible to maximize their power. It was literally a boat full of DMPCs, right down to his favorite self-insert. This wasn't a secret. The DM would gleefully brag about his OP combo class builds and how they were unbeatable. Meanwhile, we're all on level 1, and immediately, I'm seeing a problem with the story. Why are we being hired by these gods? I'm not super excited about a game that's basically running errands for people much more powerful than us, but hey, the DM insists he has a plan, so maybe this is all a front or something. Rogue player is having her first session as well, and both her and my sorcerer were skittish about the job for different reasons. DM then declared that our minds were being read by multiple characters on the ship, and refused to let us save against the effect because they're too powerful, lol. I objected to this, pointing out that my character had certain things that she would want to keep private, and was basically told, too bad. I felt like I had the option of being that player who makes things difficult unnecessarily by refusing to buy into the plot or swallowing my objections and hoping it got better. I chose the latter, which became a bad habit throughout this campaign for me. The DM was young and earnest and I genuinely was hoping that somehow, someway, it would all get better. The session continues with DMPCs flexing on us aggressively, making everyone in the party sign binding contracts that would basically insta-kill us if we ever tried to leave the airship without permission or tell anyone about our employment. When my sorcerer objected to this, I was told that the fighter had signed up on her behalf, and so she was already employed, so shut up and stop asking questions. The rogue was similarly reluctant, but the DM basically rushed along, saying, You all sign up and we just move on. We're then given an objective. Go to a house and pick up something from the person there. Expect some trouble, the guy hasn't checked in recently. Okay, cool, a dungeon. Maybe this will be better. You've probably noticed by now that I'm not filling in any plot elements. That's because uh, there were basically none. 
the DM actively refused to world build for us. We would ask for descriptions and get maybe two words about the area we're in. Every character had one of two personalities, apathetic and bored, or sarcastic and mean. I'm not exaggerating this at all. Whenever we pushed back on how boring the situation was, he would either send us fanfic about his DMPCs or complain we didn't read the Eberron guidebook from cover to cover and memorize all the details. All the while, he claimed to be an amazing storyteller. In this dungeon, more problems arose. It became immediately apparent that the dungeon was built like his DMPCs, exploiting a bunch of 3.5 mechanics none of us were even remotely familiar with, and therefore filled with overpowered monsters that could basically all but one-shot our squishy little level ones. At the last second, one of the ship DMPCs bursts through the roof and slaughters everything in one turn. I was praying at this point that this was all just an introductory session and that we'd face a reasonable challenge next week. Maybe. Surely. Well, for the next few sessions, the pattern was the same. Throw our party at a challenge that wasn't even remotely scaled to our level, all but murderous, and then when he realized that we were about to TPK, send in his level 20s to rescue us. This was incredibly demoralizing and unfun. Myself, Rogue, and Bard all started playing our characters as frustrated and digging in our heels on these missions that we were clearly not qualified to go on. Fighter Player was a sweetheart and didn't want to cause waves, so he played his character as more agreeable, if worried for sorcerer's safety. This upset the DM because apparently we were supposed to be delighted at how cool and brave his DMPCs were for saving us all the time. We tried to explain multiple times what we weren't enjoying, and it was like talking to a wall. He'd nod, say he got it, and then literally do the same thing again. Then he got dismissive and even a bit jerkish that we kept bringing up this not having fun problem. Okay, looking back on it, we should have quit. In fact, Ranger Player did quit, citing work obligations, smart guy. So, why didn't we? Well, we were all friends outside the game, and we didn't want the bridge burned. The DM was young and had some mental health problems we were trying to tread carefully around too. Finally, we really, really liked our characters, and we really wanted to love this game. This group was thirsty for a genuine story that we could dig our teeth into, and I think we all sort of believed that if we just held on long enough, we'd somehow get that. Anyway, eventually Rogue Player put her foot down and said she did not want to play a game where she was just a damsel in distress and she wanted a real adventure that was possible for us to complete. And, because the DM had a very unsubtle secret crush on her, he suddenly took it very seriously. He had no idea. Oh no, he'll fix that right away! <sighs> okay. Alright, maybe we'll finally see something different? The next session started out the same, we are trapped on the airship, surrounded by NPCs that could kill us with a flick of their pinky and treat us all like garbage, and we're being told about some new mission to do. And then suddenly, we were attacked, something ultra-powerful has breached the defenses of the OP ship! We run to see what was attacking and see a single man basically slaughtering the entire ship. And okay, we obviously could not take that, but it felt more like a video game cutscene with the final boss than an actual encounter, and I was good with that. The man taunted us, refused to kill us for being literally too weak to be worth his time, and then took off with a MacGuffin that they'd hidden on the ship, leaving us with one living NPC and the party on an airship surrounded by corpses. My mind was spinning with possibilities. We're the only people alive who know about the MacGuffin and its world-ending properties, and that this guy has it. We're not powerful enough to stop him now, but maybe if we go on a quest to uncover some sort of weapon to counter him? The Bard is a member of a family that gathers information, so maybe we could start there? It felt like we were finally loose from our shackles and given an actual adventure. And then, the DM describes the rogue's character abruptly awakening to a special power. And then, he describes her feeling an overwhelming urge to go and touch all of the dead NPCs with her glowing hands. And when he doesn't do it fast enough for his liking, he just takes over and narrates her touching all the dead people and them instantly healing and reviving until the whole ship is suddenly... <sighs> alive again. So while the NPCs are alive again, we have no reason to step up and take responsibility for the situation... at all. In fact, it's literally their problem. My sorcerer declares that this is way above her pay grade, and she wants out. She demands to be fired. End of session. Before the next session, the DM sent me a whiny message complaining that my character wanting to quit was really messing up his plans. 
I told him, quite bluntly, that the only thing she had keeping her there was her fighter friend, and the massacre of an entire airship of OP NPCs right in front of her very much overrode that. I had tried and tried to be flexible about this, but this situation was ridiculous, and no reasonable person would stick around after that, at least not without an amazing reason. She doesn't trust the NPCs not to get her killed, and she doesn't trust that they can protect her now. It's on him as the DM to create reasons for my character to stay. And no, threatening her was not a good reason to stay. Huge dick move on my part? Yes. No. It's a perfectly reasonable move on your part, but anyway. I don't really regret it though. This ended the era of me being soft and gentle to the DM about his flaws. The next session started with the captain of the ship giving a big speech that the DM assured me would make your character feel better about feeling weak. The speech can basically be summed up as, We deliberately let him take the MacGuffin and murder us as part of our master plan, and we secretly knew that the rogue had magical revival powers all along, and that Big Bad would swat her out of existence because of his arrogance. And now, we have the upper hand. Yeah, so now my sorcerer thinks they're powerless to stop him, and also complete morons. Luckily, I didn't voice this out loud. Anything you mentioned your character thinking was fair game for the multiple mind readers on the ship to pick up on and yell at you about. This is getting super long, so I'm going to summarize the next few atrocities. The airship at first seemed like it was going to be our hub world between missions of sorts. It very quickly became our prison. There were multiple times I can remember when a character in the party would be protesting an NPC or a mission or anything, and the DM would smugly remind us that we are X amount of feet in the air, and if they don't like it, they could just leave. Between this and the insta-kill magic contracts, we were basically forced to do whatever dumb errands the NPCs didn't feel like solving with their infinite powers that day. Any attempt to make a private space in the ship was fruitless. Our rooms didn't have locks, and hiding in some dark corner was impossible because of the unresistible mind readers. When the bard tried to use a spell to block his door, an NPC Kool-Aid man burst through the wall just to make a point. I wanted a spell that would let my sorcerer make a private pocket dimension, and the DM rejected it because private pocket dimensions can't tether to relative objects. Okay, except that the airship already had multiple pocket dimensions tethered to it? Three-fourths of the party members relied on magic in some way. The ship had anti-magic capabilities built into it. It wasn't uncommon for them to force us into a room, activate the anti-magic so we couldn't use magic to leave, and then yell at us about how disrespectful, lazy, awful, selfish, and ungrateful we are, etc. Finally, we had no say in where the airship was going and why. This point would have mattered more if we could distinguish between any of the locations. Bard player found this the most irksome since he wanted to check in on his family in a particular city, but DM didn't want him to use his information gathering family background to gather information. So we were always conveniently anywhere but there. My character had not yet revealed that she was a changeling and was constantly questioning the NPCs and picking holes in their plans. DM got pissed about this and outed her to the party via his self-insert NPC, also a changeling. So a very important character detail that I had been waiting to reveal in a cool way instead was taken from me because he wanted to punish me for not blindly going along with what he wanted. The group did manage to salvage some interesting inter-party conflict out of the mess, but I was capital P pissed. He later insisted he didn't do it out of pettiness, but his precious and perfect NPC decided that sorcerer keeping secrets was hurting the party, and he was doing her a favor by exposing her. From that point forward, my sorcerer was openly and unapologetically hostile to that NPC, and he was always, always shocked that she despised him for outing her. He now couldn't say he was unaware of the problems with the overleveled encounters with NPCs, especially as the party were refusing to cooperate in character. This meant that we had to start playing the JUSTIFICATION GAME! Why was this weak level 2 party being sent to do missions that one level 20 NPC could manage in an hour? Well you see, if the NPCs ever leave the ship, they're instantly attacked by horrifying monsters! What about all the other times the NPCs clearly left the ship to bail us out? Uh, ignore those, those don't count. Why is it our problem that they lost their MacGuffin in a storm of terrible planning? Reminder that the plan included all of them dying? Uh, because you should want to save the world? Okay, no, we'd like to leave. Well, if you leave, you'll be instantly murdered by a powerful cult that wants to kill the rogue because of her magic revival powers. Okay, then how will we go on missions? Oh, no, the cult will only murder you if you leave when you're not supposed to. So on and so forth. He just couldn't admit that there was a problem with his lazy setup, and so just kept chaining us down more and more so we'd stay on the railroad. The rogue player was interested in becoming a lycanthrope. I'm going to confess right now, I have no idea how this is supposed to work in 3.5, except that it apparently instantly saw her gain 10 levels. 
instead of, I don't know, worrying about balance, the DM instantly gifted this to her because of his crush. For the record, Rogue Player wasn't aware of the crush and was incredibly uncomfortable once it became public. Girl was very much in love with someone else and oblivious to the nice guy act happening. So now, the whole party is not only weaker than everyone on the ship, but also their own party member because DM thinks this will somehow get him in her pants. The OP and boring encounters continued, I can barely remember a distinct battle from this game because so many of them were just, you're in a square room and there's X number of mooks fights. Social encounters were similarly boring, either the character would completely stonewall us because he didn't want us to try to go that way, or they would be petty, sarcastic, and mean. I also started to notice that all the DMPCs would be abruptly hostile at the same time if the DM was pissed at the player. I took the brunt of this. My character was insulted for being angry at being outed, frightened at being nearly murdered on a mission, and betrayed when an NPC completely and utterly recklessly put her in danger. Her concerns were only valid if another party member backed her up. The only saving grace of these games was the party roleplay. I loved the connection between Fighter and My Sorcerer. They were the de facto brother and sister and would have long conversations about the ship and their situation. She gained a close friend of the Rogue eventually, resulting from the Changeling reveal and Fallout, so the DM actually uh, claimed credit for it. She even had a friendly rivalry at the bar, the nobody picks on him but me sort of thing. My happiest times in this game were building these relationships. Naturally, the DM insisted on forcing his NPCs into every single conversation we had. If the party had an in-joke, cute scene, or in-game competition, suddenly the NPCs would appear and try to co-opt it. One time, he literally forced his way into a heartfelt conversation between Sorcerer and Rogue to have his self-insert tell Rogue not to be afraid, they were all her family now, and gave her a ring of invisibility. Sorcerer was literally shoved out of the game until I pointed out I was still there and got a half-hearted... Oh yeah, you too, I guess. That was the first time Rogue Player started to realize she was getting special treatment. Our bard died in one of the overpowered fights. Oh well, Rogue has a magic revival power, right? Nope. The DM suddenly said it doesn't work and demanded we fork over all of our money for a resurrection scroll instead. He later proudly told us, out of character, this was his solution to us accumulating too much wealth for our party level. He was the one that set our salary. He had this whole thing about the party members falling in love and having babies. This began with a silly gag about the bard and rogue and then was quickly taken too far by the DM. Bard had his memories modify at some point and the DM told me he intended to push the relationship between the two by creating false memories because it'd be funny. I told him Rogue wouldn't like that, and he, of course, dropped it. He also pressured me to have my character be more spontaneous with your shape-shifting. Many changelings in his world were solely purposed to work in brothels, and my character was considered prudish for not having the same opinion of shape-shifting as his self-insert. He demanded the Warforge develop feelings for one of his NPCs, and claimed the bard didn't seduce enough. It got old. The whole party got sick of the imbalance and complained, so the DM took a three-week sulk break and then came back and announced a sudden time skip in which all of our characters would level from 4 to 12. Apparently, we all took apprenticeships under different ship NPCs, despite the entire party being indifferent to them at best. Okay, fine. Whatever. Maybe he's better at designing encounters for a higher-leveled party. Haha, <laughs> yeah, no. He just wanted an excuse to abuse higher level stuff like level 9 spells. The first encounter we had post the leveling was an underground square room that had no shadows. The rogue's build relied on shadows for her sneak attack, and she was super excited to use it, feel powerful for once. We faced a wizard with 10 times the normal amount of hit points who trounced us until an NPC stepped in. <sighs> the rogue pretty much thinks the encounter was designed to put her in her place for being too excited for being powerful. Not even she is allowed to be more powerful than the mighty DMPCs. Fighter player wanted his character to have a bit of a cool backstory as a wandering warrior who vanished when he joined my sorcerer when she was young. DM agreed to this and then never brought it up once. Fighter wasn't asking for much, just a unique rumor or maybe the occasional NPC recognizing him as a fighter who like saved them from bandits or something, but DM never once utilized this. All the other Warforged on the ship were just cooler and stronger than him, and nobody gave him the time of day because he was the dumb fighter. This kind of broke the player's heart because he was frankly the one trying his hardest to make the game work. He went along with the NPCs, suspended his disbelief so hard I'm surprised it didn't hurt, and encouraged our characters to help out when they very much did not want to. How hard would it have been to give him this one thing? He described the ship getting together for... for... why? Why, why, why do these things happen? 
I like how the OP says that this is a regular occurrence. Like, yes, fellow stable humans and D&D players, come down for your regular or- When we all noped out of that aggressively, we were prudes again. Oh, God Ex Machina. Near the end, I had a moment where my character left the airship and wasn't planning on returning when the NPCs wanted her to. DM literally decided to have the god of her faith descend from the celestial planes to tell her to go back to the ship and respect her NPCs and follow orders like a good little servant, or they would curse her. Said god was a trickster god who favored discourse and shaking up the natural order of things. So, I told the DM my sorcerer thought she encountered an imposter. He got offended and whined that I needed to just go back to the ship already. I tried over and over again to get him to improve. I sent him resources. I wrote feedback on unsatisfying scenes and things he could try differently. I called out the creepy stuff in and out of game. Boy, was I sick of him bothering Rogue at this point. He would constantly pretend to take what I said on board and then completely ignore it when it wasn't 100% praise for him and his amazing stories. In general, DM just had no idea how to give us what we wanted, but we weren't complicated as players. All we wanted was an adventure and face challenges that we could overcome without needing to be rescued. The problem was, the DM didn't want to run a game or an adventure. He wanted a captive audience for his amazing NPCs and their story. This all went on for about a year or so. By this point, the game was basically a social trap. The DM was heavily involved in the club we played at in our local social groups and was known for tantrums. We all felt like quitting the game would basically cause an apocalyptic event. Not to mention, nobody was communicating about how they felt with the other players, so everyone kind of had the feeling that leaving would be ruining the fun for everyone else. It was geek social fallacies at work, basically. That all changed one faithful night. I was at a party, chatting with an unrelated person, and I was quite drunk. You're in DM's game, right? I heard him say it was going amazingly and you all were having a really fun time. I am pretty sure it was the alcohol that possessed me, but I kind of just snapped and started ranting. For an hour and a half straight, I poured out every feeling about this game to my poor friend who handled it like an absolute champ. By the time I was done, I knew I had to quit. It was affecting me way too much. No D&D is better than bad D&D. I told the other players my intentions first, and well, that's when we found out everyone felt the same thing, but had been too polite to bring it up, and collectively as a group, we all agreed it was done. Then we agonized over a kind but firm message to the DM to tell him that we were done that would minimize the chances of him having an absolute meltdown about it. That took three days. Fortunately, DM took us all quitting with a relative amount of grace, at least initially. He later get drunk and passive aggressive and loudly talk about us being bad players who hated fun and how I gave you everything you wanted and you were greedy and wanted more. Personally, I sincerely hope that he learned something from that experience. Like, maybe having four players drop you like a sack of hot potatoes would give you a serious reality check, but nope, it was the players who were wrong. I stepped back from DM as a friend after this. The game was a strong factor, but he was getting insufferable outside of the game as well. Just a lot of passive aggressiveness, creepiness towards women, and constantly excusing any crappy behavior with, but I'm mentally ill. There was also a weird period where I think he somehow expected us all to crawl back to him and beg him to start the game up again. Like he would smugly tell fighter player that he was playing slash running five different games and I'm having so much fun and gosh, how many games are you guys playing? Oh right, none. Joke's on him though. Remember the first friend I drunk ranted at for a disproportionate amount of time? Well, it turns out he's a DM and he's considering starting a story heavy campaign. Just needed players and oh my, we all just became available. We've been playing in a story rich 5th edition campaign for about a year now and it is amazing. New DM is a treasure and we all absolutely adore and cherish him. The combat is hard but not unfair. The NPCs are varied, interesting and fun. And most importantly, there are no airships. All right, you guys still with me? That was fun, but we are not quite done yet. Eyes up, we still have a part two. So I was chatting with one of my fellow players about that campaign. He played the fighter. Ranting about the game here was cathartic and stirred up some old memories, so we were joking about some specific really bad moments and comparing them to our current campaign that had really good moments. It was nice. It could have been worse, I guess, I said. Thinking of some of the things I've read on this sub, he could have had one of our characters or something else awful. A guilty look comes over fighter friend's face, and my stomach drops. I ask him what's up, he tries to play it off, but I'm pushy, and eventually he relents. 
When the campaign ended, we thought the DM handled it amicably. There was some passive-aggressive clinginess when we joined the new game with a different DM, but overall, I genuinely believed he had handled a pretty harsh social event with a degree of maturity. It was pretty much the only thing that kept me from dropping him as a friend altogether at that very moment. Well, apparently, I didn't have the full story. Fighter Fred had kept it from me because he knew it would really upset me, which I don't blame him for, because it really upset me. So it turns out that the DM took the campaign ending with all the grace of a reversing dump truck without tires, and I guess he blamed me specifically for it? Apparently, he went to Fighter Friend and demanded to know if I had pressured the group into quitting. Fighter Friend was super non-combative and had a bad habit of telling people exactly what they wanted to hear, but he claims he did not throw me under the bus here, which was nice. DM was left to deal with the fact that four players had aggressively quit on him. A bit of time goes by, and DM and Fighter Friend are at another social event. Just them, nobody else from the game. DM proudly told Fighter that he had written an epilogue about where our characters ended up. Fighter Friend, having listened to me and Rogue Player in particular, complained about how the DM railroaded our characters, was nervous about this, and asked for details. Okay, for starters, Bard and Rogue got married. The players had no serious interest in their characters being romantic, and never had. There was one moment where the Bard confessed his undying love to get the Rogue out of an arranged marriage, but it was clearly a joke slash buff. Side note, the DM had the Bard roll to see if the confession was true. Bard refused. DM later told Fighter that he was going to fudge the role because he wanted them to get together so badly. Fighter got married to a random NPC that he had interacted with a bit more than the rest of the random NPCs. Even though he was a Warforged, which was a giant suit of sentient armor that didn't really do complex emotion, this NPC was apparently so adorable and great that he developed emotions just so he could love her. Never mind his sibling relationship with my character that had been going on for years. That wasn't real love. This love interest character was under 18 during our campaign, so apparently they got married after she came of age. Ew. And my sorcerer. Well, the only mention that she gets is that she got ripped at Bard and Rogue's wedding. But it's cool because Fighter ripped out the spine of her attacker. <sighs> so, some context. By the end of the campaign, we were all multiclassing into weird prestige classes just to have a hope to survive these crappy encounters. My character was a changeling, so I went with a class called Recaster, which let her do permanent, hands-free spellcasting, as well as a limited number of free, quickened, and enhanced spells. Thanks to the DM's terrible battle planning, I easily had the highest kill count in the group, thanks to all the mooks standing within fireballing distance. This was before you got into her taking spells like Flushed Stone, Disintegrate, Prismatic Ray, and other just screw this encounter magic. The concept that somebody would be able to overpower her long enough to do that was absolutely laughable. This girl never let anyone get close to her, and even if she did, she was armed to the magical teeth. She wore her mage armor to the market. The party teased her for her paranoia constantly. But okay, let's assume this guy was some ultimate evil with an anti-magic dick or something. Right after the DM basically claims I'm personally responsible for his campaign ending, his epilogue comes into existence, where everyone else's characters get married and have babies, but my character gets punished with some <laughs> Yeah, right oh buddy, real subtle. Poor Fighter had been pretty young when all this went down, think 18, while the rest of the group was 24 plus, and he absolutely didn't know how to respond to this. I mean, he knew it was bad, but he didn't know what to do about it. He asked the DM to send him a copy of the epilogue, claiming curiosity but wanting proof. The DM never came through though, I'm guessing maybe he realized that providing written evidence of this screwery wouldn't work out well for him. In the end, Fighter Friend decided to pretend like he'd never heard about the epilogue until we were talking the other night. I do not blame him. In my last post, I defend the DM here and there by saying he was young, inexperienced, and oblivious. I take it all back. I am disgusted that after I gave him kudos for mostly taking the ending of the campaign, well, this turned out to be the reality. He's a grade A asshole, and I am done. What can be said that hasn't been said already? This story is quite famous for a reason. There is so much going on here, it's pretty much the quintessential RPG horror story. We have simping, nice guyisms, DMPCs, terrible plot, horrible response to criticism. I mean, it has absolutely everything, and it is quite something. Now, first and foremost, I am going to say that this DM has no excuse. Being young or having a mental disability is not an excuse for the nice guyisms, the hatred of criticism, and the ridiculous reaction to the game ending that this DM had. That fanfiction at the end was downright disturbing, and this DM has no excuse for making that. 
Also, side note, this guy wasn't like 15, he was 20. They are no longer children. They have no excuse. Thank you, Kratos, literal god of war. This kind of behavior is just not okay, especially when at this point, you're a full-grown adult. Nor does he have an excuse for not understanding why his players were not having fun, considering that the OP of the story, she went out of her way to make it very clear what was going on, not in a rude way, clearly. This player is the dream. I mean, sending your DM criticism, sending them notes, giving them feedback, a lot of DMs would kill for that kind of thing. But this DM is a whole other beast entirely. The simping for the rogue and making her horribly uncomfortable during the game, not good either. Nice guyisms are very bad and should not be a part of D&D or a part of anything, to be frank. The DMPCs are the epitome of everything that can go wrong with them. They are absolutely ridiculously overpowered, stole the spotlight from the players, and positively ruined the game. This DM is like the Tommy Wiseau of Dungeons & Dragons, somebody who's fundamentally untalented and has no desire to grow, learn, evolve, or do anything of the sort, creating a horrible product without any regard to criticism or self-improvement. Hell, the creepiness towards women checks out too. This guy really is the Tommy Wiseau of Dungeons & Dragons. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of RPG Horror Stories. Thank you so much to Crit Crab for allowing me to use the story that he covered in a very famous video. Please check out the original if you want to hear Crit Crab read this. It's a few years old, but it's still a good one, and it's what got me into this whole series in the first place. If you guys enjoyed this episode, then please do leave a like. It really helps me out. If you want to see more of my content, then please do check out my Q&Play series, where I answer your questions while playing some video games. And while you're there, subscribe to Crispy's Tavern to get more of our content right as it comes out. And finally, if you want to leave your own stories or thoughts, go down to the comments down below. If you can't think of a comment, leave the comment airship to reference this infamous story and to let me know you made it to the end of the video. In essence, like, comment, subscribe. Happy Valentine's Day. I will see you all next time. Farewell.